Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, verse 13. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Janabalaba Girivaradhari Gopi Janabalaba Girivaradhari Yashodanandana Braja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Banachari Yamuna Tira Banachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Gopi Janabalaba Girivaradhari Jaya Gopi Janabalaba Girivaradhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Banachari Jamuna Tira Banachari Jaya Radha Madhava <coughs> Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Om Vishnu Pada Paramahamsa Paribraja Gacharya Stotara Sata Sri Sri Mad A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Nama Chajya Haridas Thakur Ki Jai, Prince Kaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadada Sri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopagopinath, Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jai, Vrindabhan Mathura Dham Ki Jai, Navadip Mayapur Dham Ki Jai, Jamuna Mai Ki Jai, Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Tulsi Devi Ki Jai, Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, verse 13. Chatur Vardhyam Maya Shristam Guna Karma Vibhaga Shaha Tasya karta rama pimam vidya karta rama vyayam Chatur vadnyam maya shrishtam guna karma vibhagasha Tasya karta rama pimam vidya karta rama vyayam Chatur vadnyam maya shrishtam guna karma vibhagasha Tasya karta rama pimam vidya karta rama vyayam chatur varnyam The four divisions of human society. Maya by me. Shri Tam created it. Guna quality. 
karma work. Vibhagashaha in terms of divisions. Tasya of that. Kartaram the father. Api although. Mam me. Vidi you may know. Akartaram as the non doer. Avyayam being unchangeable. Translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada. According to the three modes of material nature and the work ascribed to them, the four divisions of human society were created by me. And although I am the creator of this system, you should know that I am yet the non-doer, being unchangeable. Purport. The Lord is the creator of everything. Everything is born of him, everything is sustained by him, and everything, after annihilation, rests in him. He is therefore the creator of the four divisions of the social order, beginning with the intelligent class of men, technically called brahmanas, due to their being situated in the mode of goodness. Next is the administrative class, technically called the kshatriyas, due to their being situated being situated in the mode of passion. The mercantile men, called the Vaishyas, were situated in a, mode, in a mixed modes of passion and ignorance, and the Shudras, or laborer class, were situated in the ignorant mode of material nature. In spite of his creating the four divisions of human society, Lord Krishna does not belong to any of these divisions, because he is not one of the conditioned souls, a section of which, of whom, form human society. Human society is similar to any other animal society. But to elevate men from the animal status, the above mentioned divisions are created by the Lord for the systematic development of Krishna consciousness. The tendency of, of a particular man Toward work is determined by the modes of material nature which he has acquired. Such symptoms of life, according to different modes of material nature, are described in the 18th chapter of this book. A person in Krishna consciousness, however, is above even the brahmanas, because a brahmana, by quality, is supposed to know about Brahman, the supreme absolute truth. Most of them approach the impersonal Brahman, manifestation of Lord Krishna. But only a man who transcends the limited knowledge of a Brahmana and reaches the knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, becomes a person in Krishna consciousness, or, in other words, a Vaishnava. Krishna consciousness includes knowledge of all different plenary expansions of Krishna, namely Rama, Nrishinga, Varaha, etc. However, as Krishna is transcendental to this system of the four divisions of human society, a person in Krishna consciousness is also transcendental to all divisions of human society, whether we consider the division of community, nation, or species. Chatur Varnya Mahasistam Gunakarma Vibhagashaha Tasya kartaram apimam vidya kartaram avyayam. So the four divisions of life, also known as India as the caste system, were created by Krishna. Why is that? That is because the purpose of human life is to reconnect our eternal relationship with the Lord. Factually, every living entity is eternally connected to God in a relationship of servant to the master. Just like my, my hand is connected to my body and the purpose of the hand is to serve the body. So the reality is that we are spirit soul, eternally servants of God. We are the marginal energy of the Lord. And we are meant 
to be conscious of that reality. When we forget that reality, when we forget our responsibility in relationship with God, when we want to imitate God, then we are transferred to the material world. Because in the spiritual world, Krishna is the Purusha and everybody else is Prakriti. Krishna is the enjoyer and everybody else is the enjoyed. In the spiritual world, everybody is conscious, constantly Krishna conscious. The business of the, of the spiritual world is for Krishna to enjoy his relationship with the living entities who never forget his position and who never forget their position either. When the living entity, because of his minute independence, wants to compete with Krishna, he is moved to the material world because in the spiritual world there is no competition. Krishna is Asama Urdva. Asama means no one is equal. Urva, no one is greater than him. Krishna is the Ishvara Parama, the supreme controller. Everybody else is controlled. That is the situation in the spiritual world. It's like in a kingdom. When a kingdom is functioning properly, properly that is the king who is in charge and all the subjects are following his administration. Why is the king in charge? The king is in charge because his, his activity in life is for the benefit of the citizens. Arjuna also, when he was asked to fight and he declined to fight, one of the reasons he gave to Krishna was that if we fight and we kill all these warriors, then the social structure, the fabric of society will be torn, will be lost. Women will not be protected. Children will be born without any samskara, without any thought, without any understanding of what is the purpose of procre procreation. Human society will become hellish. Why was he thinking like that? He was thinking like that because he was a warrior, he was a king, he was a kshatriya. That, was, that is the main quality of Akshatriya. Akshatriya uh, is, is courageous and his, his duty is to protect the citizens. So the Kshatriyas in human society are compared to the arms in the human body. What is the purpose of the arms? The purpose of the arms is to protect the body from any attack and to organize everything around so that the body is protected, so that the body can live without any restriction or difficulties. So, when we, so when in this kingdom, the citizens understand their position in relationship with the king, then the kingdom is peaceful and prosperous. Similarly, in the kingdom of God, when the living entity understands his eternal relationship with God and he enjoys an eternal, he does not compete with God, then he may live in the spiritual world. If there is competition or if there is refusal to accept the authority of God, that would cause a disturbance. And by its very nature, the spiritual world is free from disturbance. So any living entity who wants to create a disturbance is allowed to do so in the material world. Just like in a family, a father may have many children. As long as his children are obedient to him, then the house is peaceful. If some of the children become disobedient, and cause a disturbance for the rest of the children, for the rest of the family, the father will isolate them. He will put them, he will give them some place where they will not disturb everybody else. Or in the kingdom, if the citizens become outlaws, if they become reluctant to follow the orders of the king, they are put in prison. Why? Because otherwise it would cause too much disturbance in society. And so this is, the, this is the basic 
of all spirituality. It's got nothing to do with Hinduism, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Buddhism. It's got to do with understanding that Aham Brahmasmi, I am spirit and I am Nitya Krishna Das, and the eternal servant of God. Now we may forget, but God does not forget. Therefore, even though he puts us in the material world, he takes care of us. He supplies all the living to all the living entities, even they are antagonistic to him, he supplies all their needs. Nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam. For those of you who are enamored of the of the of the of the shruti of the original Vedas, Nityo nityanam. Out of all the eternal nityanam, there is one eternal nitya. Chetanas chetananam. Out of all those entities who are chetana, who are conscious, there is one. Chetana chetananam. What is the difference between this nitya, chetana, and the many, the nityanam and chetananam, the many conscious? What is the difference between the single conscious living entity? Eko, one. Bahunam to the many. Yo vidadati kaman. He satisfies all their needs and all their desires. So Krishna creates the material world and he creates it perfectly so that we can come into the material world, exercise our independence, stop creating a disturbance in the spiritual world and by Krishna's arrangement because he doesn't forget who he is, is avyayam, he doesn't change, he doesn't come under the influence of illusion, he doesn't forget that we are his children, he doesn't forget that we are meant to serve him, therefore he arranges the material world in such a way that at least in the spiritual, in, in, the, in, the, in the human form of life, we have a chance to understand, to reawaken our lost relationship with him. And to do that, he created four divisions. These four divisions are called Chatur Varnyam. Varnyam means according to work. So, as I often explain, these divisions are like a pyramid. If you take the whole of human society, at the top of the pyramid are the Brahmanas or the intellectuals. Then a little lower are the administrators, a little lower and broader or the Vaishas, or the mercantile class, and at the bottom, at the widest possible, are the Shudras, or the workers. So the more you go towards the Brahminical culture, the less people you are, there are who are qualified. So the Brahmana, the first duty of the Brahmana, is to guide society. What motivates a Brahmana? A Brahmana is motivated by knowledge. Is not motivated by money, he cannot be bribed, he cannot be bought. He is motivated by truth. Truth is the basis of Brahminical life. And in the 18th chapter, Prabhupada comments in his purport, these four divisions are described. So the Brahmana, the qualities of the Brahmana is Shamo Dhamma Tapa Socham Kshantir Arjavam Evacha. Jnana Vijnanam Astikyam. These qualities are the qualities Brahmana Swabhava Jam. So Shama means a Brahmana is peaceful. Why is he peaceful? He's peaceful because he doesn't require any material things. In fact, if you give a Brahmana material opulence, he will distribute it. Why? Because he understands it doesn't belong to him. He understands that if I receive some material facilities, some land or some money, it is the property of Krishna. It is not my property. If somebody comes forward to become a student, he understands that this person is a living entity who is an eternal servant of God. Even he may not realize it, my duty as a Brahmana is to take him towards the Brahminical path and reconnect him with God. Therefore, 
when he understands the situation, he becomes peaceful. He doesn't require anything. He understands that God is in control and all arrangements have been made by him to be taken care of. He doesn't have to endeavor separately. Dhamma, he controls his senses. Tapa, he is austere. Socham, is clean. Shantir, is peaceful. Arjavam, is honest, straightforward. Jnana Vigyana, he has knowledge and he has wisdom, wisdom, and he is religious. These are the qualities of a Brahmanas. That is what qualifies him to be the head of society. Not birth, not any influence by anyone else, not by the order or by the vote of any assembly, no, by his qualities. No one can vote someone to become a Brahmana. No one can vote someone to become a spiritual master. No one can vote someone to become a, a Vaishnava. These things are available by quality. It is self-evident. Nobody can rubber stamp me that, okay, now you're a Vaishnava. No, I'm a Vaishnava if I serve Vishnu. In India, there was a great movement during the time of Mahatma Gandhi that he noticed that the poor people, the sweepers, they were being exploited by the higher classes. So he artificially gave them the name Harijan. What he meant was that even though they were sweepers, even though you consider them unclean, even though you don't allow them in the temple, even though you don't allow them in your village sometimes, still they are Harijans, they are devotees of God. They are the men of God. So in one way we can understand, although really a Harijan, is a Vaishnava. You cannot rubber stamp someone and make him a Vaishnava. For example, in certain temples in India, only caste Brahmanas are allowed entry, others not. That doesn't mean that one who is not a caste Brahmana cannot qualify himself to enter the temple. He can, but he must become qualified. So, these are the Brahmanas. The purpose of the Brahmanas, who are the head, is to take care of the social body. And as Kshatriyas, they are meant to protect the body and to organize society. So the qualities of the Kshatriyas is uh, Teja, strength, Daksham, expertise, Yuddha Chapya Palayanam, courageous in battle, he does not flee. Dhanam is Charitable, Ishvara is a leader. These are the qualities of Akshatriya. Not by birth, again, not by, it is by Guna and by Karma. Here Krishna says, Guna, in this verse, Guna, Karma, Vibhaga, Shaha. The Vibhaga, the Vibhaga, the divisions of this society is determined by Guna and by Karma, by quality and by work. Of course, if you're born the son of a Brahmana, or if you're born the son or a daughter of a Kshatriya, you automatically will develop those qualities because of the circumstances around you. But it is not a definite thing. You have to develop those qualities. My father may be a doctor or a surgeon. It doesn't mean I automatically become a doctor and a surgeon also. I have to qualify. I have to go to university. I have to get a degree. Or my father may be the high court judge. But it doesn't mean I am also a high court judge. I have to become qualified. So, Kshatriyas, Brahmana, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas. The Vaishyas are the productive, oh, what moves a Kshatriya is power. He's interested in, in, in power. That is his, his uh, motivation. And the motivation of the next class, or the Vaishyas, which is, of course, more and more of them, that is wealth. So, Krishi, Goraksya, Vani, Jam, Vaishya, Karma, Swabhava, Jam. The Swabhava, or the, see, these qualities, these divisions are by Swabhava, by, by, by our internal nature, not what we pretend, what we really are. So, the Swabhava, or the real nature of the Vaishya, is Krishi, or agriculture, owning land, Goraksya, protecting cow, and vanijam, commerce. Why Krishi? Why 
land cultivation because all wealth is coming from the land. I was just reading the other day that we owe our life, the material world is existing because we have land and we have rain. Simple as that. All the wealth is coming from the land. And the purpose of the Vaisha is to produce food, is to protect the cow. If you have some land and if you have some cows, you can very easily maintain yourself. It's not that the Hindus worship the cow because of some sentimentality. Of course, a cow is very beautiful, especially small cows. Small cows, small bulls, they are enchantingly beautiful. So there is a natural tendency to love them and to be affectionate towards them. They are so innocent. But the purpose of the cow in combination with the land is so that we can resolve our material needs in a simple way without having to over-endeavor. The reason being that by doing that we save time to hear about spiritual life. And we don't forget that because the brahmanas at the top of the chain, they remind everybody that your purpose of life is not to make money, it's not to increase your family, it's not to increase your wealth, it is to understand your eternal relationship with God. Because only if you understand your eternal relationship with Krishna can you stop the cycle of birth and death. Otherwise you will keep rolling in this cycle of birth and death, and it is called samsara, like a wheel. And we go up and we go down. When we are up in the evolutionary scale, when we become demigods, we control those below us. We enjoy at their expense. And because we take enjoyment from others, we become indebted. We become heavy with karma. And the heavier we become, down we come. When we go to the lower species of life, others exploit us. And the more we are exploited, the more the burden of karma is relieved from us. And we become light and again we come up. So this is like a, like a swing. Sometimes we up, sometimes we are down. And it continues again and again and again. Even when it comes to the end of this universal creation, all those living entities who still have material desires, who, are, who still have karma to neutralize, they enter into the body of Vishnu and remain there in a yogic sleep until the creation takes place place again, then according to their karma, according to their work, according to their, to, their, to their entanglement, they get another body. So one who understands this has the tendency to live very simply and very peacefully. Take what you need and not more than what you need. Because if you take more than what you need, you become more, become more and more entangled and you keep rotating in the cycle of birth and death. And when you, are, when you are in the cycle of birth and death, you take birth, you get old, you become diseased and you die. Jamma, mrityu, jara, byadi, dukkha, dosha, anudarshanam. Krishna says, look, anu, anudarshanam with great, look with great, uh, with great uh, attention. Anudarshanam, by following the authorities you can understand the disadvantages of material life. And what bigger disadvantage is there than to get old and to die, and not knowing where you're going to go. How can you compare that to the advantage of understanding your relationship with God and being liberated even in this body? Understanding that you will not take another birth. Understanding, uh, uh, enjoying your relationship with Krishna, which is Nava Yovana, newer and newer and newer. There is no comparison. And then at the bottom of the pyramid, you have the Shudras. And the Shudras' job is uh, to serve the upper classes. The Vaishyas, they are motivated by wealth. And the Shudras simply need to be taken care of. They cannot be, they don't have the power to be independent. The Brahmana, Kshatra and Vaishyas, they will always, they will never work for anybody else. 
they will always be independent. But the Shudras, they simply want to be taken care of and their advancement depends on their service attitude to the higher class. In other words, because they are part of the system, then they also make spiritual progress along with the rest of the pyramid. In a boat, there may be the captain and the officers, and there may be passengers, and there may be animals on the boat, so they're all at different level. Captain is not the same as a seaman. A first-class passenger is not the same as a third-class passenger. The animals are not the same as the human beings on the boat. But when the boat gets to the other side, guess what? The captain gets there, officers get there, the men get there, the first-class, second-class, third-class passengers get there, the animals, get, even the bugs in the boat get to the other side. So when there is a system created by Krishna, and we follow the system, not only the human beings, but also the land, the animals, the plants, every living entity within the universe becomes liberated as because it is a, it is a wholesale spiritual arrangement. Right now we have a wholesale material arrangement and nobody knows who's who, what we're doing here and where we're going to go. But if we implement the system that Krishna has created and everywhere there are intellectuals, everywhere there are warriors, everywhere there are mercantile men and everywhere there are workers, no matter where you go, but if we spiritualize this program then we can understand our relationship with Krishna and we can finish our repetition of birth and death. Thank you very much. So we have uh, some comments here. Here is Atma Vidya Prabhu, Hare Krishna, good evening to all. Raju Mengrani, Hare Krishna. Devananda Dube, Mandi Priya, they all say Hare Krishna. Krishna Primavati Devi Dasi. She comments, just a natural attraction for a certain type of work. What if it is mixed? Uh, it may be mixed, but it, Again, it depends on the motivation. If your motivation is wealth, then it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you go out to earn wealth, you become a, you're a Vaishya by nature. Uh, and if your motivation is knowledge, then you become a philosopher or a poet or a, or, a, or a professor. You teach. Of course, these four divisions only really work and become and, and manifest the the inherent reason for being created when we put Krishna in the center. Then she comments, see in line with self-realized souls, most important to be on the boat back to God. Exactly. And the wonderful thing is that there is the boat back to God. It is goes across the Karana Ocean, the, 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 uh, the Viraja River. And enters into the ocean of the of spiritual of the spiritual kingdom. When a devotee takes the boat and he crosses to the spiritual kingdom, by magic that boat comes back. He doesn't take the boat with him. The boat comes back, and somebody else can also cross. Thank you very much. So we will talk again on coming Wednesday. Hare Krishna. Thank you for participating.